Hey there, Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this short video I want to show you the different types of CSS queries you can make in Textual. So right in front of me I have a Textual query sandbox that they've built and you can just install this and run it and I'm gonna leave a, a, a link below so that you can install it if you want. And what I want to show you now is again how different types of queries work. Because in Textual you can use the query and query one methods and they can be very useful when you want to retrieve a series of widgets that you have in your application but in order to be able to use those methods properly you need to know how to query your application and so that's what i'm going to be showing you now so the the very most basic type of query is where you type the class of something. So for example, we see here various vertical widgets, vertical containers. And so if I just type vertical, I am able to retrieve all of those vertical. And one thing that's very important to understand is that this type of query will take inheritance into account. So for example, if I switch to this panel right here, if you see here on the right, I have a static, a label, and then a static. And label inherits from static. So if I type something like static, I also get the label in my query. Why? Because label inherits from static. And maybe the easiest way to see this is if, if I type widget, I will get everything from my query because everything is a widget. So this is the most basic type of query by type. Now you can also make queries by ID. So the ID here is shown with the hash. For example, the input here, this one has an ID of input zero. So if I type something like input zero, then I get that input over there. If I do something like static one, I will get this static right here, static one. And if I use commas, I am able to separate multiple queries. So I can get multiple widgets with a single query. Now, one thing that you need to take into account is that a query by ID might return more than a single widget. So I think there was an example here. Let's see, one, two, three. Uh, okay, so in this case, I can't. And that's the most common case. But there might be situations where a query by ID might return more than one widget. So you, you must be mindful of that. If you set up your app, probably it won't, but that might happen. Uh, yes, so that cannot happen. And then another type of query you can make is by class. So actually, let's go to this one. I like this one because every cell here has a bunch of classes. For example, the even class is defined on even numbers. And so if I type dot even, these light up. And if I change this to odd, then the others light up and class query start with a dot. And you can also combine queries, right? You can combine these queries and show something like, let's take a look. For example, there's the foo class on the inputs here on the left and in this label. And so if I type something like dot foo, I'm going to get three widgets, but I can do something like label.foo and so I'm only looking for labels that have the class foo and so I only get this label here. So these queries can be combined without spaces. So for example I can also say label hash label zero and that's going to return this specific label. Now when it comes to classes you can obviously combine them so for example, let's check the even yes, dot even dot yes, and this lights up. And there's two things here. The first thing is the order doesn't matter. So dot yes dot even will return the same classes. And I forgot the second. <laughs> so this is what I wanted to show you about combining classes directly. So this is looking, again, this is looking for widgets that have at the same time the classes yes and even. Let me check my notes. So I've shown you how to look up types and I've shown you that inheritance matters. I've shown you how to use IDs and classes. 
I've shown you how to take multiple. Okay, perfect. Now I want to show you how you can query the your application, the widgets in your application, and take into account the nestedness of the item. So the structure of the DOM. That's how I want to say it. Let's go back to the first playground and notice how there's a bunch of verticals here and they're nested in multiple ways, right? So if I do something like vertical, I'm going to get many different verticals. Now what I want to do is, if I have a, let's do vertical greater than, obviously I don't mean greater than, but this is the simple vertical, greater than vertical, what does this look for? This looks for vertical widgets that are a direct descendant of other vertical widgets. And so if I press enter, these are the four, sorry, the three verticals I get. I get this vertical because its parent is a vertical. I get this vertical because its parent is a vertical. And I get this inner vertical because its parent is the vertical, is this vertical. For example, I don't get these three verticals because their parent, uh, their parent is this horizontal and I don't get this outermost vertical because its parent is not a vertical. It's this playground thing. Right, and I can nest this even further. For example, I can have vertical, vertical, vertical. And this looks for, this finds verticals that are direct children of verticals that are direct children of verticals. And so I only get this one. Or for example, I can flip this and if I can say something like, find me all of the verticals that are direct children of the horizontal. And so I get these three. And so this greater than sign looks for immediate descendants, but I can change this and I can say something like vertical space vertical. And now this looks for all of the verticals that are nested somewhere inside a vertical. And that's why these three verticals here now are lit up because they are inside a vertical. It's just not the immediate parent. It's the, the grandfather, right? So that's the difference between a space and a greater than space greater than okay i hope this makes sense <coughs> yeah i was checking my notes again and i think this is what i wanted to show you so to recap we've taken a look at queries by type queries by type where inheritance takes place queries by class queries by id Combining the three queries with the structure of the DOM queries where the structure of the DOM takes place. I'm sorry, I'm feeling I'm just feeling uneasy. And queries by multiple queries, yes, separated by commas. So you can also do that. So essentially there's a bunch of queries you can make. I think the best thing to do is for you to install this sandbox as well and play around with this, I will leave a link below. I will also link to the documentation where you can read more about this. And, and I think that's it. We've been here for almost nine minutes now. So I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Join the Discord server and ask all of your questions. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.